Catalysis is actually very, very interesting uh, because traditional metal can catalyze a reaction in two different ways, either acting as a homogeneous catalyst or heterogeneous catalyst. Homogeneous catalyst, usually by definition, we say that it is in the same physical state as the reactant. Heterogeneous catalyst is it is in a different physical state as the reactant. Now, even though we define it based on the physical state, but it's actually not the most important difference. The way the transition metal catalyzes the reaction as a homogeneous catalyst, as a heterogeneous catalyst, is actually very, very different. So let us just try to run this through. Now, homogeneous catalyst, if it is in the same physical state, usually the reaction is aqueous, transition metal is also aqueous. And the property for the transition metal that allows it to function as a homogeneous catalyst will be its variable oxidation state. Because they can have a variable oxidation state, then they can act as a middleman to transfer electron. Later when we draw the mechanism, we will get to appreciate that. This is a classic example between S2OA2- and I- to give me my sulfate and aldine. And catalyzed by either using iron 2 plus or iron 3 plus, we're going to use iron 2 plus as an example of a catalyst in this case. I can also use iron 3 plus. Either way is fine. And you notice if I consider the reactants, both reactants are negatively charged. And this is the reason why the reaction is slow. They are negatively charged, they will repel each other, and the rate of the reaction is slow, kinetically not feasible. Interestingly, since the E values are given here, if you go and calculate the feasibility for this reaction, reduction of S2OA2 minus minus oxidation of I minus, we will get a positive value. So the reaction is kinetically uh, not feasible, but thermodynamically feasible. Because E cell calculates thermodynamic feasibility, I'll get a positive E cell, thermodynamically feasible, but the reaction is slow because the reactants are negatively charged. So remember, we've mentioned for feasibility, if the reaction, if I want it to occur, by right, it should be both thermodynamically feasible, kinetically feasible, must be likely to happen and happen fast enough. So this guy is likely to happen because it is thermodynamically feasible, but too slow because it's kinetically not feasible. So iron 2 plus comes in and iron 2 plus says that you don't like each other, never mind, I'll act as the middleman. You transfer the electron to me, I pass the electron to the other guy. I'll act as a middleman to help to transfer the electrons. And your iron 2 plus actually will interfere with the mechanism. It actually changes the mechanism. Now, before we write down the mechanism, we would have to, I can show you the whole thing. It's actually quite easy. We would have to consider the half equations involving my reactant, which I've already written here. And the half equation involving my catalyst, we also written here. And make sure the E value involving the catalyst must be in between the E value for my reactor. This is an important criteria so that later I can show step one, step two, both E cells are positive. So we notice for this reaction, S2OA2 minus undergoes reduction, I minus undergoes oxidation. And if I have my transition metal cation, in this case, iron two, if iron two is given, then we will use the transition metal to fix the reaction. The transition metal catalyst will determine what happens in step one, what happens in step two. It's actually very easy to deduce. Let's talk about it. Now, since I'm using iron 2, the first step will be involving iron 2. Focus on the transition metal. Iron 2 will oxidize to iron 3 based on this half equation. Iron 2 plus will be oxidized to iron 3 plus. And since this is oxidation, you pair this up with a reduction. Find the reactant that undergoes reduction, in this case, S2OA2 minus. Balance the equation, which looks a bit complicated, but actually it's looked, it looks tedious, but it's actually very easy. What is more important is calculating the E cell. Reduction of S2OA2 minus, minus the oxidation for iron 2 plus. I can show that the E cell it is a positive value and therefore the reaction is feasible. Then the second step, since iron 2 plus it is the catalyst, if it is reacted off, it must form back iron 2 plus. Iron 2 plus it is a catalyst, it is regenerated at the end of the reaction. So if iron 2 plus is used up, later iron 2 plus must come back at the second step. So step number one, iron two oxidized to iron three. Step number two, iron three must reduce back to iron two plus because I need to regenerate my iron two plus. So if second step, iron three undergoes reduction to iron two, then it must pair up with an oxidation. Find the reactant that undergoes oxidation. I minus is oxidized, pair this up. Write down the balance equation. Calculate the E cell reduction of iron three plus versus oxidation of I minus. Show that E cell is positive and the reaction is feasible. So it's again very, very simple. Focus on the transition metal. The transition metal will fix the reaction for me. So if I start off with iron two, iron two, step number one, iron two oxidize, pair up with a reduction. Step two, iron three, reduce back to iron two, regenerate the catalyst, 
then pair up with oxidation. I can also use iron 3 plus. Huh? Yeah, I can use, uh, use iron 3 plus. Iron 3 plus, if I'm using iron 3 plus as a catalyst, then first step is iron 3 reduce, oxidize with I2. Then later, iron 2 oxidize back to iron 3, pair up with a reduction. If I use iron 2 plus at the beginning, I'll get back iron 2 plus at the end of the reaction. If I'm using iron 3 plus, I'll end up with iron 3 plus at the end of the reaction. The catalyst will always be regenerated at the end of the reaction. So if you focus on the transition metal catalyst, it's actually quite easy for us to figure out this mechanism. When we run through the practice question, we'll have a few more examples. Because this is very uh, closely related to electrochem, we will find this homogeneous catalysis more common as compared to the other one, as compared to heterogeneous catalysis. Now, let us move on. Eh? Versus uncatalyzed reaction, you notice the transition metal actually changes the mechanism. So the transition metal catalyst is like, oh, the two of you eh, react so slow, no? So let me come in I'll, and I'll act as a middleman. You don't like each other, doesn't matter. Why don't you just transfer the electron to me? I'll help you pass the electron to the other guy. So the transition metal comes in, interferes with the mechanism. Of course, if there's a middleman, the total number of steps should increase, but each step is faster. Activation energy is lowered. So assuming that the original uncatalyzed reaction is one step with a higher activation energy, catalyzed reaction now will have two steps. Because if I have a middleman, then definitely the total number of steps will increase, but the activation energy for each step is significantly lower. Because of that, the rate of the reaction picks up. So homogeneous catalyst changes the mechanism, interferes with the mechanism, but the activation energy is lowered. And this is the reason why, maybe I'll come back to this. Huh? This is the reason why the property for transition metal, this variable oxidation state is important because you notice how would iron 2 plus function as the catalyst in this case is because during the mechanism, iron 2 plus oxidized to iron 3, then iron 3 plus can go back to iron 2. So iron can be equally happy being a plus 2 oxidation state or plus 3 oxidation state. It don't really favor one of the oxidation state because if it favors one oxidation state, then once it forms that oxidation state, it doesn't want to go back. So iron is pretty okay with plus 2 oxidation state or plus 3 oxidation state. It makes it a very good medium to help to transfer electron. I pass the electron to somebody else because I don't hang on to that electron. I don't like it so much. I can take it. I can easily give it up. Variable oxidation state is an important property for my transition element that allows it to function as a homogeneous catalyst. So good to appreciate that. Now, under remarks, there are some points maybe we might have missed out, but we have talked about many of them already. First point, uncatalyzed reaction slow, so both reactants are scenes, both reactants are negatively charged, so activation energy is high. Kinetically, not very feasible. So again, interestingly, thermodynamically feasible, kinetically, not very feasible. Then second point, if I'm using ion 3 plus as a catalyst, step number one, step number two will swap. I think earlier we've mentioned that you can use either one of them. Of course, if I'm using iron 3 plus as a catalyst, I will get back iron 3 plus at the end of the reaction. Now, point number three is important. I need to show that both steps are feasible. I have to show that the E cell for both steps are positive, thermodynamically feasible. That's why this criteria is important. I need to make sure the E value for the catalyst is in between the E value for the reactant so that the E cell that we're calculating is are both feasible. If this guy is outside this range, either bigger than 2.01 or smaller than 0.54, then later when you do calculation, one of the E cell is negative. So we cannot show that iron 2 plus is oxidized, but iron 3 plus cannot be reduced back to iron 2 plus. That means one of the steps is not feasible. Then we cannot show that iron 2 plus oxidized to 3 plus, then 3 plus can come back to 2 plus. In order for me to have step number one plus step number two, both steps has to be feasible. Both E cells has to be positive. So that's an important criteria. Now, the last point, I think this is important. Because in syllabus, we are interested in the similarities for transition metal. So we say that, oh, they have similar physical and chemical properties. And this means that if I have a transition metal that can catalyze a certain reaction, then very likely I can find another transition metal that can effectively do the same thing. So this is very consistent with the invariant physical and chemical properties for my transition metal. So I think this point, we will want to have an appreciation involving this. I try to pay a bit more attention to that. One transition metal can do this thing. Most likely another guy can do effectively the same thing, but maybe the rate of the reaction is a bit different, but effectively they can do the same thing. Of course, there are certain conditions associated with that. So I would expect another transition metal can effectively do the same catalysis, but there's a certain criteria that we have to fulfill. First thing is 
it's good to choose positive species on both sides of the equation. Typically, we will choose plus three charge, let's say M3 plus reversible M2 plus, because most transition metal will form plus two charge and more plus two plus three, plus two plus three plus four, and so on. So usually we will choose plus two plus three because both species are positive and therefore for this reaction, they can attract the reactants very well. Plus three charge can attract the reactant, plus two charge can also attract the reactant. We don't try to choose things like this, huh? M2 plus reversible to metal. We don't choose this half equation for two reasons. First thing, the metal is a solid state. It is not an equals medium. So it's not really counted as a homogeneous catalyst. It is not in the same physical state as the reactant. Then uh, this is idea number one. Idea number two is if it is neutral, then it cannot attract the negative reactant. So it's better for the species to be positively charged, then they are more attractive to the negative reactant. So this is idea number one. And idea number two is the E value has to be in between the E value for the reactant, which we have mentioned. I need to show that the E cell for both steps are feasible. So usually these are the two criteria that you look out for. That's why for the half equation involving iron, we choose the plus three plus two. E value 0.77 is between 2.01 and 0.54 volt. I know that iron 2 plus or iron 3 plus can catalyze this reaction. If you look at the data booklet, we should be able to find another guy, cobalt 3 plus and cobalt 2 plus. E value is also between 0.54 and 2.01. Remember, this is for the reactant. Eh? This E value is for the reactants. So cobalt 3 plus or cobalt 2 plus can effectively catalyze the same reaction. So these are the two criteria that we usually look out for.